Hello, hello everyone. It's Maddie with Spectrum Art Creations and today we're going to be creating this crisscross five pocket pouch with a bonus pocket on the back. So gather up a double sided 12 by 12 or a solid if you like and create along. I'm going to be using the Grand Hotel from Stamperia. This pad is all about the wallpapers and like fabric uh, patchwork uh, samples. So beautiful to work with. And we still have it in store if you're interested. Now, this project is a funny story. It's part of, I'm gonna be making it part of my Finish It Friday uh, project series because I found this pad all cut up inside one of those clear 12 by 12 cases. I had cut out the journaling cards. I had cut out also the small tags. I'm gonna show you where I got each of these pieces from. So you kind of catch up to what I found and where I'm at. So they were all already pre-cut and I also had done four jumbo tags and that's it. And then the rest of the pad, I don't really know what I had in mind originally for this uh, project. Obviously I had made the tags to go with it and stuff like that, but I don't know what my intent was because it was over a year ago that I know that's embarrassing to admit, isn't it? Yes. Over a year ago, I had cut all the stuff up, started a project, put it in a clear case, set it off to the side and that's where it's been sitting ever since. So I decided, okay, don't know what I had in mind. What do I do with this stuff now? I got to come up with something since I need to finish it. Uh, and you know, put that project to bed, <laughs> done and dusted. So I came up with a, an original. I decided um, to design something from scratch. Now, again, I am sure that there is something probably like this out there because it's not rocket science, guys. But I was proud of myself because I did math. <laughs> And I came up with something original. So hopefully you guys like it and can use it. And of course, create them in different sizes and put all kinds of fun ephemera into these pouches. Use them not only as a standalone, but also be able to insert them into your journals as well. Okay, so here's what I had, as I mentioned originally. I had the four jumbo tags. They were only decorated on one side. I had all the journaling cards and the little tags cut out. So the next thing I need to do is I'm going to decorate the back because I'm going to change this up and do something totally different with it now. So um, I started playing around with the idea of a pocket. How do, you know, where do I insert this ephemera and tags and pockets into? Because they're going to be great for journaling or they're going to be great for writing quotes or poems or messages or giving as a gift idea. So I grabbed the four large tags and I custom made a pocket for it using one 12 by 12. Et voila, here we are. So the first thing I need to do is to decorate or finish the back to those large tags. I'm simply using, of course, my cut up 12 by 12, which I had, not the one that I showed you in the entirety in the beginning. Um, that was just to kind of show you what the full pad looks like, not my cut up one, but I've used my uh, cut up papers in order to create some additional panels for the back. I am using our very own Spectrum Art Creations decoupage and sealing glue in order to uh, adhere those back panels. Now, the glue itself, the bottle, comes with a brush top and it's great for like small things, but when I have a large surface to do like this, I rather use a much bigger brush. It just makes it go by that much faster. <laughs> so that is what I'm going to do is to decorate the back using um, some of those pages. Now, I'm going to need at least one 12 by 12 to create my uh, crisscross five pocket pouch. So I know that I need to keep at least four 12 by 12 pages full, like in entirety, right? Not cut up because I need the full 12 by 12. So I made sure that I set aside four pages because I have four pockets, of course, um, so that I can go ahead and be able to complete a pouch for each of these jumbo tags. 
actually you don't have to have a full 12 by 12 so long as you have a piece that is five and a half inches tall by 11 wide you can mix and match from your scraps as well so of course having coordinating papers from a collection is always easiest because you know it's already done it's all color coordinated for you but it would be fun to mix and match now with our tag fully done because now i've decorated both front and back uh, we can go ahead and move on to our next step which is going to be to insert some eyelets for that i'm going to be using our wide eyelets which we also have in store in all kinds of colors now these are great to use in larger projects because they have the wide um, metal piece in the front uh, it, it really helps to stand out in larger projects i mean you can use them in small and medium projects to make an impact but i like using them in large things too because sometimes our eyelids um i mean they're decorative they are beautiful finish especially if they have colors um they can get lost you know if you have just this little tiny eyelid and a big you know tag like this then obviously it makes a much nicer impact to have something that is larger now i was trying to decide what color i wanted to use but then i realized oh how fun why not make four different colors so i decided that i was going to make four different color same paper line but i was just going to highlight one of the colors per tag and so i used teal i used brown i used um pink and then of course i used a blue and so this way you guys can decide which one do you like best would you have leaned on making these more on the blue side or maybe you are team pink and you want to um, emphasize the pink oh, or maybe you just want to keep it more neutral so you're going to go for the browns and of course madison my daughter loves her teal so i had to make a teal one plus the beautiful teal colors in this collection are just gorgeous and stunning so what a great way to highlight those okay now my tags are not all like super perfect again they, they were cut from scraps and i don't again know what i had as an intention to make with these originally so um what i needed to do was find a center now rather than doing all that math and trying to figure out what is center or middle of you know fractions <laughs> I just use my zero ruler love this thing you guys know that it's one of my favorite tools you see it in every video just about because it's what I use half is at one and seven eighths now how do I know that simply because I have the side which has a zero as a level almost like a bubble and then the numbers start um, going left and right uh, equally so all I do is I just move that ruler back and forth until I see the exact same number on my left hand side as on my right hand side and that tells me that that is centered and that is great not only for the fact that hey you guys know I don't do fractions and decimals and math in general but uh, because well it's a cinch number one to use but also if you have things that are not like super perfect, like let's face it, my tags were not cut perfect originally. I guess I just used whatever scraps I had. And uh, therefore, you know, they might be off by like an eighth of an inch or something. Well, guess what? I don't want to figure out all that math. So by using my fantastic ruler, which on one side has the regular measurements in inches, but it includes the sevenths. Um, I'm sorry, the eighths and the sixteenths, which, you know, again, I, it's hard to, to do all that math, but the ruler has them already ready for you. And then if you flip it over on the other side, it's got the zero leveler, which is great for finding your centers. So again, one of my favorite tools to use for sure. And I am using my pink crocodile yes i've got a pink one now so originally i had a teal and i just got this pink and rose gold i was so excited to upgrade and trade for a pink one because oh it's just beautiful the other one was a little heavier though so i don't know if that's a good thing i mean it was harder uh, on the hands as far as it being heavy but the the metal seemed to be the construction seemed to be a little heavier and stronger so 
but again I'm not trying to um, you know work on like industrial things so it should be just fine we usually work on paper and fabric and maybe some plastic and metal but not heavy heavy metal oh that's funny get it heavy metal <laughs> crack myself up can you guys tell it's really really early here <laughs> it's too early because <laughs> I'm making no sense anyway I'm not gonna edit this out you guys just get to listen to my nonsense as I narrate <laughs> I'm in one of those moods today. Okay, so I've got some journaling cards, just an idea. I'm just trying to see how the colors look. I'm probably gonna end up changing all of this anyway, but then I know that I need four tags. So I am going to um, add some eyelids to these tags. Now for these, which are smaller, I don't want to use my big wide eyelids because I think it's overkill. Again, would it look bad? No. It would really add some pizzazz to it but I think it's overkill and I want to mix and match my eyelids too so I'm going to bring in some of my smaller regular eyelids just the regular ones to um, add to the smaller tags the eyelids um, you know I kind of played around with some colors because we've got black we've got silver we've got bronze uh, and again see using my zero ruler it's a snap to figure out where my center is. I don't have to overthink that. Plus, honestly, these little tags are so easy because they have that um, almost like a, not a beveled, but a, a um, scalloped uh, top. So it's kind of easy to just eyeball it and, and find a center for them. Uh, again, I was trying to debate, do I use silver? Do I use black? Do I use gold? Do I use bronze? Do I want maybe different ones for different tags? But I ended up settling on using bronze for all of them and just keeping those uniform. Since we already have color going on at the top with that eyelid, and then we're gonna bring in some other color uh, at the end and color coordinate all that, we really did not need all that much color on these. So very, very simply, just adding some eyelids to the smaller ones and so now our tags are ready at least the ones that I had already pre-cut from the collection because we are going to be making some other tags to go with this as well so hang tight now these tags are extra this is for the completed project but you might be here just for the crisscross pocket so let's get to that we're gonna need one 12 by 12 piece of paper and we're going to be careful to make sure we look at the orientation of our flowers. The first cut we're going to be is going to be our width, which is 11 inches. So we're going to need 11 inches wide. Keep in mind your orientation, okay? Then we're going to flip that and we're going to start cutting our height. We're going to need two pieces. The first piece we're going to cut at five and a half inches tall. So that piece will end up being five and a half tall by 11 inches wide. Then we're gonna grab the remainder and we're gonna cut a four inch tall piece. So that second piece will be four inches tall by the 11 width that we had already done. Now for the completed project, you're gonna need those extra pieces. You're gonna wanna have those. So if you are working with a 12 by 12, keep that. So now we have two pieces, one that's five and a half tall by 11 wide and one that is four inches tall by 11 wide. And those again, we're gonna set off to the side, but you might be working with scraps. And if you are, then you wouldn't have any leftovers or at least not, you know, the width and the height that I have. Next, we're gonna work on scoring the pieces for our pocket. We're gonna start with the tallest, the one that is five and a half inches tall, and it's gonna be 11 inches wide. We're going to score that in two places. We're gonna make a score at three inches and we're going to make a score at seven. So we'll score at three and then move over to seven. Then we're gonna bring in our second piece. That's the one that's four inches tall. That's a smaller one. So from now on, I'm just gonna to refer to them as large being the five and a half tall and small being the four. Now, I'm gonna flip it over because I don't want my papers to be matchy-matchy. I want one side to be different than the other. This is the one that is four inches 
by 11 and we're gonna score at four inches and at eight inches. And that is it for our scoring. So we can put the scoreboard away. Now we're gonna work on creating some marks, some tick marks in order to be able to create our angles. Now, typically when I do this, I don't necessarily burnish it and ink it first. I do all of my inking together. However, I know that it's pretty hard to see on camera. So for the sake of the video, instead of just creating the lines, I'm going to go ahead and see, I was trying to show you the lines, but I can't. So I am gonna fold it and I'm gonna burnish it down. And then I'm also going to ink those um, fold lines. This way you guys will be able to see it on camera. Now, uh, some paper is very easy to, to kind of see your crease lines. Some others might not be. So if that is the case and it's a hard one for you guys to see, then go ahead and ink it up first if you prefer. Okay, with the inking done, it's a little bit easier for you guys to see the score lines now on camera. So we are going to start working on creating those tick marks, as I mentioned. We're gonna start with the large one first. Now, we're gonna work on the left and right hand side. So I'm just gonna flip it on its side. On the left hand side, we're gonna mark at three and a half inches from the bottom. And on the right hand side, we are going to mark at two and a half inches from the bottom. Now, again, if your paper has orientation, make sure you guys flip it over if need be and check your, um, you know, illustrations to make sure that any of the decorations are not upside down. So just to recap, three and a half from the bottom on the left hand side and two and a half from the bottom on the right hand side. I'm gonna check my images just to make sure my orientation's right, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the small one. Now, the shorter one, though, has different measurements. On the left-hand side, we are going to mark at an inch from the bottom, so just one inch. And then on the right-hand side, we are going to mark at an inch and a half from the bottom. Now, once we've got those markings done, those are going to be the tick marks that are going to help us to create our angles. Very simple. The simplest way to do this, of course, is to simply use your ruler and you're going to look for that score line. See how I had darkened it for you with the ink? From that score line to the tick mark that we just made, we're going to trace at an angle. Now, you can trace it with a pencil if you want to cut it by with a scissor or a trimmer. Another way of doing this is just simply tearing. So I'm going to show you that you just mark it lightly with a pencil and this way you can just bring in a scissor or a guillotine or a trimmer. So again from the score line to the tick or from the tick to the score line. We're going to do both sides, the left and the right. The center of course is going to remain untouched for now we are going to do a little something to the smaller piece, but that is yet to come. So for now, we're simply tracing our lines from the tick lines to the score. So now we've got this kind of shape. We're gonna repeat that on the other piece, on the large piece, same thing. Once again, before I commit to my pencil lines, I am checking my the orientation of my paper. Um, this one is more like a repeating wallpaper, so not a biggie honestly if it was upside down uh, you really couldn't tell there is no right or wrong way so to speak but you might have something that has images or trees or people or even text so in those cases you do want to be a little bit more cognizant 
to ensure that you are not um, doing this upside down. All right, and then we have the angle for that side as well. So you could use the scissors and cut, or as I mentioned, you can use the tear method, which gives it a really nice deckled edge. Um, you know, it's like a torn edge, and it depends. Like I'm just using my metal ruler, but we do have deckled dies, and we do have. Um, deckled or uh, tear rulers as well that we sell from we are memory keepers which creates an even more jagged look which would be amazing so you could do it that way um, as well so scissors rulers deckled trimmers um, anything that you have to be able to cut those angles would be great now i suggest that you try different ways as a matter of fact um oh see i have a little piece there that if you do not like it, you can always just snip it. And I think I do snip one later on. Uh, in this case, the shorter end is always going to go. So there's two flaps, right? Left and right. There's going to be one that's going to be short and that's always going to get tucked in. There's going to be one flap that's going to be the full length. Well, almost a full length of the pocket. And you can even cut that short if you wanted to too. But there's gonna be a left and a right. The shorter one gets tucked in, the longer one goes on top. So that's the easiest way to remember when you're creating these pockets. You could do all kinds of changes to it too. So as you do your first one, I'm sure you guys are now going to get all kinds of great ideas on, you know, oh, you know what? I can shorten this flap too. Or later on, we'll talk about the fact that you can even leave the left and right side flaps open so that you can actually journal on them and add a magnet. So there's all kinds of modifications that you can make to this after this. Um, I'm just giving you that starting point with the measurements to, to obviously I've done like the, the math for you guys, uh, and then you can take it from there. And here I'm showing you that I'm using my uh, Tim Holtz distressing blade or tool, which is great because it even emphasizes that jagged edge more. My um, my metal ruler did a good cut, but it was kind of straight and I, or not straight, it was not rugged enough. There you go. I wanted it to have a little bit more, so I decided to use my tool to roughen up those edges even more so. And I also played around with the inking. Some I inked, some I did not, or most I did not. And again, when you're creating these, play around. What look do you like? What other features do you think you can incorporate or use? And of course, you can go ahead and change um, the dimensions to it as well. You can make it bigger, you can make them smaller, totally up to you. There's so many different possibilities. Okay, so we are all done with that. And the next thing is, remember I had mentioned that we needed to do a, something a little extra to the smaller of the pieces. So we're gonna bring that back and we're gonna find our center. Of course, mine are four inches, so two inches is my center. If you don't have the same size, you can always use your zero and just center that by bubbling that center to the middle marking it with a light notch. And then I'm gonna bring in my one and a half uh, circle punch. And all that I do is I kind of start to press down until it grabs the paper. And once I'm perfectly happy with it, then I punch. And then we're gonna re-distress and re-ink that little notch and that will be ready. It's as simple as that. Typically, the way that I do this is uh, I do all of this process first before I really burnish anything down or distress it. If you remember, I mentioned to you guys in the beginning that I was going to be um, inking up those, uh, not only creasing the folds, but also um, burnishing them down and then inking them up so you guys could see it better on camera. But I don't typically like to do that because for this reason, as you can see here, it's not a perfect fit. It's never gonna be perfect, guys. These things are handmade. And sure, we can, you know, 
move it a little bit when we're cutting or uh, perhaps even when we're scoring it. So you're gonna have a little bit of give, but it's okay because you can still fix it. Worst comes to worst and you do want to follow the steps, um, you know, the same way I did. It's not a biggie. You'll notice that when I close, one side is obviously sticking out a little bit. Well, not obviously, it's like a smidge. So what I'm gonna do, see, I'll show it to you there, is just take my scissor and trim that off. So again, see, you can always work it in. Now, when I go to fit this in, you're gonna see that it's gonna bubble a little bit, meaning my crease line still um, was not far enough. And all you have to do, if you had not fully burnished it, is just to you know kind of shift the score line a little bit play with it but even with having it inked and scored I can still move this over just a hair and re-burnish it and then you'll see that if it's just fine and nobody will know that I kind of move that um you know that that crease on one of the sides like a sixteenth of an inch not even and once it is all inked up we are all set to go so what I'm saying is you might have a little bit of play in there um and if you do, you know, you, you can go ahead and adjust. Now, to glue this down, we're gonna do it as follows. We're going to start with our largest. We're going to grab and we're going to glue the left hand side flap first, only on the bottom though. I didn't do that, so I'm not showing you that, but you do need to do that, because I figured that out after the fact. So glue your left hand side on the bottom only the shorter one then the right hand flap the one that's the full size we're going to glue on the bottom and on the right hand side and that's going to close that pocket okay that completes that then we're going to bring our smaller one and we're going to realize that we can move this up and down before we actually adhere it so if you need it higher or lower you do have room for play there but if not, we're going to add glue on the bottom and we're gonna line that up on our table by standing it up flat. That way we know we're perfectly centered and aligned and we're going to add our glue only to the bottom. Then we're going to bring in the smaller of the flaps, which is the one on the right hand side and we're going to adhere that. Now, you can also leave those open and add a magnet to it, and it would look so cool, because then it would be magnetized, and then you would open it, and those little flaps you can journal on as well. So again, play around with the ideas. But on the right-hand side, we're just gonna glue the bottom, and on the left-hand side, we're gonna glue the bottom, and of course, the right-hand side of that, so that it glues down as well. And that's it, it's as simple as that. We have constructed our pocket. Again, you can do all kinds of variations, such as you can add laces or trims before you glue it down. As I mentioned, you can shift it up or down. You can do all kinds of stuff, but as it stands right now, we've got that pocket there, this one that crisscrosses here, then we also have another one there and then that one there. So we've got a total of four pockets in the front that we can play with. Plus we've got our strip that we saved. Now with that strip, we can do all kinds of other stuff. Now, of course we have all kinds of leftover papers and even the monthly cards. So if you wanted to add some calendars in there, that'd be totally cool, but I'm gonna save that for something later. So now we've got that strip that we had left over. We can turn this into a bookmark or a large tag to put in the front or in the back if we wanted to. We can also add this as a pocket here in the back as well. So now we would have one, two pockets in the back as well. Um, you can, you know, now you would have all those in the front and of course two more in the back. So you could kind of do all kinds of alterations to this as well. Here I'm showing you how you could have that and you can have, um, you know, yet other pockets. So I'm just showing you all kinds of different uh, variances. And we have that little strip as well. So we can add another like little belly band or a slim pocket or just a decorative trim. But now that we have some ideas, you guys can stop and alter that if need be and then resume back playing. Now I am making multiples, we're making four total. So all I'm doing is playing around with my panels and mix and matching them. Remember I told you I don't want mine to be matchy-matchy, which is why I flipped that um, other one 
uh, over so that I would have different patterns instead of you know the same on the top and the bottom pocket and now I'm just playing with the combinations here now with my strips what I've decided to do again you can do belly bands you can do pockets you can do all kinds of things but I've decided to turn mine into um, some slim tags or uh, bookmarks or they could be journaling bookmarks <laughs> because you can still write on them uh, your favorite passages or perhaps a favorite quote from the book that you're reading say you're reading gone with the wind or I don't know weathering heights and you want to write a favorite quote or line or page you can do that as well and all I've done is folded them over crease them using my mono glue uh, best glue stick in the world ever yes big difference between this and um, of course your regular kitty type of um school um, glue sticks this is um, non paper warping first of all and second it is extremely extremely strong which is great because it gives you professional results so if you do not have mono uh, glue in your um, glue sticks in your arsenal you definitely want to add them but all I'm doing is folding them over so they can be really nice and strong and sturdy and now I've got um, you know double-sided which they were double-sided anyway but double layered double sided paper which makes them really really thick and using my we are memory keepers corner rounder I am first going to round the bottom corners uh, and I'm just deciding what do I want at the top what do I want at the bottom and the reason why I'm using my we are is because of course now that I've double layered this paper it can't get quite thick and I don't want to use my regular you know like smaller corner rounder because I could damage it so the we are is definitely heavy duty <laughs> and then using my we are also corner angle um, cutter I am cre creating an angle at the top in order to create tags now this one comes with two sizes a small and a medium they both tend to be um, short like smaller not you know so um, not such a deep angle so you know it's very useful because it'll cut through a lot and I mean like a lot like chipboard and MDF and like really thick substrates um, so in that sense I love using it I just wish that they had more choices for angles which reminds me I have something cooking that I'm going to be sharing with you guys very soon um, and all I've done here is use my zero ruler again to find my centers my obviously you know my tags are not perfect again they're handmade but Overall, it was pretty simple to center those and then I'm going to insert some eyelets. Now, I've got a new something coming up, brand new, original uh, product that we're going to have in the store. And I'm going to be probably making an announcement or a video or rolling it out um, on our live sale. So if you have not joined us on Saturday for our live sales, make sure that you do because you don't want to miss out. It is a great way to uh, shop live see product live be able to chat make friends we do games and giveaways it's just a whole lot of fun it is live shopping and man is it fun because we're just basically shopping all together and as i mentioned i do little demos or i explain what we're you know what a product does if you have questions I'll be more than happy to answer them as well so it's just a whole lot of fun and a great way to shop and make new friends so once my eyelets are inserted I know that these need to be inked up as well and I need to ink up all the other uh, pieces as well like my tags and all that so we're gonna take care of that next Oh, and before we um, start distressing or inking up our edges, I wanted to kind of go back and remind you that you still have those pieces that we had either cut or torn, those angle pieces. And you could totally use those. You could use those to do some uh, decorations. You can use to use them as decorations in the front because they make great panels. Look at that. That is so neat. 
You could also use them to make pockets. You can make pockets in the front and the back. You can even double them up and crisscross them for some, you know, really crisscross cool pockets in the back to match the front. So you've got, you know, extra pieces that you could work with for decorating as well. So, okay, our bookmarks are done. So we're going to look at what else we could do because we still have scraps. At least I realize that I have one pocket left and I have scraps. So after I was done inking up all of my pieces, as I mentioned, that we were gonna do that, I realized I had these pieces here that I could use. So all that I've done is I have folded them in half and I have glued them down, just like we did with the uh, making of the bookmarks. We're gonna do the same thing here. These are gonna be slightly smaller. And, and the reason why I decided on these, they're not all the same size, by the way, uh, because this is the leftover. When I cut the panels out of my 12 by 12s, I cut one from like the left bottom um, of my page and then the right bottom of my page, which left me like the letter T and left a strip in the middle and then a piece at the top. And it looked like the letter T. So I figured, ah, oh, I'm gonna cut the bottom of that T and that's what these pieces are right here. And then I just kept the long uh, strips, you know, to use for different projects. So that's how this came about. You could use whatever scraps you have available. And all I am doing once again is using my corner rounder, my chomper to round off those corners. This time I'm gonna do all four corners rounded. After I was done with this, I realized, well, you know, we have quite a few tags, bookmarks, something similar uh, kind of going. So I wanted to do something different with the top. Now, I know I'm not alone. I know that we all have all these great dies and punches that we purchased. And then somehow we just forget about them. And I thought, you know what, I, I need to break something in that from that drawer and play around with it so what i decided to do was to bring out a punch that i don't usually use well i shouldn't say that i used to use it a lot but i have not used it in quite some time and that is my banner punch again we have die sets that have multiple different size banners and i mean they come with great things if you have not checked at our dies you definitely need to because we have amazing die sets so please do check out our store now here all that i am doing is folding this in half and i am making sure that i can do it double sided so i am not putting my paper all the way up to the top you'll see here there's a little see gap there at the top i press down and then once i'm sure that i've got it I punch and what it does is it creates a double sided connected banner, uh, fishtail banner. So uh, I decided to uh, just go ahead and add those. Now at first I wasn't sure if I was going to just adhere it all the way down leveled, but then I played with the idea of what if I actually raise it up so I can either do it this way, which still looks nice, um, very cute, but then I decided, oh, what if I actually raise that fishtail banner just a little bit and then we have almost like this pull tab on it. Of course, my color was um, really kind of blending in. So I tried to find a scrap that had um, more of a solid and that blue did give me that um, pop of color that I needed as well. So I'm just gonna make four of these. And then like I mentioned, we're gonna just pull it up slightly off of the um, tag itself or the little mini bookmark. And then that way it's going to allow me to create this almost like a pole, which I think looks kind of neat. Again, we're trying to break up, you know, um, the, the, the whole tag thing where they all kind of look uniformed. And so I'm trying different widths, different tops. One is of course a regular one is more like a bookmark. So it's slender and skinny. One was the one that was included with the paper line, which has got that, um, flourished on top uh, and then of course now this one is going to have a pull so the point is not to make it all uniform vary the widths the colors the sizes the tops uh, so it just looks a little bit more diverse once our little fishtail banner pulls are distressed and inked up we are going to adhere those to do that we're going to center them 
we're going to first just adhere the back piece to make sure that it is nice and leveled. Uh, I'm going to press down on the front. There's no glue though, so that kind of helps me just make sure, yeah, that looks nice and level and centered. And when I am ready, then I'm going to adhere glue to the other half plus the top, and that is going to close that little pull. And they look so cute, and they're gonna look even cuter once we insert our eyelid. So that's another um, good idea on just a quick way to use your scraps and be able to create, you know, something a little different, not not always so uniform, not the typical uh, tag or the typical bookmark, but to, to break up the look as well. And that's kind of funny, I was showing you that I happened to punch and it punched exactly the center of <laughs> that little flower, not intentional. I just, I mean, you guys saw I'm just cutting and, and gluing and not even thinking, but it just so happened that that flower got centered and the hole was perfectly aligned. It's it's funny when things like that happen because if I try to do that, there's no way I would do it, right? So I should have taken credit and said I meant to do that. Now, here's another fun thing we're going to be doing. We're gonna be working on some wax seals. Well, faux wax seals. For that, I'm going to bring in my one and a quarter circle punch and I'm gonna use my awesome silicone mat. Now this mat we also have in store. You can make, as you can see, a plethora, I think 30. I think it makes 30 um, wax seals at the same time. So you could really have a whole lot of fun with making wax seals in a day. Just sit there and knock them out and make all kinds of different ones. But here is something, a little twist, a little different. I'm going to, instead of coloring my back, I'm going to be using my scrap piece of paper in order to create a color um, backing. I'm going to use my water spritzer to add some water. And, and I'm going to probably do a mini series on wax seals because I've got some tips and tricks for you guys but I do add water to one of my wells. Sometimes there's also something else that I do do in order to m help release the, the, oh my gosh, the wax seal, the metal piece from the wax itself, from the hot glue. So I'll do a series and I'll give you guys some tips, but I am gonna be adding hot glue on top of my paper and then I'm gonna be pressing down my wax seal, letting it sit there for a little bit and then popping it out. And what it does is it creates the perfect color for my backing using my scraps piece of paper because the hot glue is clear. So all you can see is the, um, almost like a, I don't know, like a frosted look and then the paper is on the back. It's really neat. I'll, you know, if you guys want more details or if you want me to do a, a video on just this so I can show you some different samples, I can certainly do that. But then after I was done with that, all I did was grab one of my permanent metallic markers. These are just regular markers, but they are, um, they're like metallic. So it's, it's pretty neat. Uh, this one I think happens to be the bronzy colored one. It really matched the eyelids well. So, and I'm just kind of going up over the raised areas in order to highlight the, the image on the wax seal. So they're faux wax seals because it's not really candle wax, which is very brittle. These are of course made with hot glue, which are completely pliable. They'll never break. And because I've added paper to the back, well, guess what? We are able to go ahead and, um, adhere those any which way we want, any adhesive. We no longer have to worry about the fact that, oh, what's gonna, you know, attach, you know, acrylic glue. Of course, the answer is always more acrylic uh, wax sticks um, glue. But if you're wondering, um, you know, oh, I don't know what glue to use. I don't wanna use my hot glue gun. Uh, because let's say that you had made a bunch of these and put them aside, and then one day you just wanna pop one on a card or something. Well, if you use the paper on the backing, then you could use any glue you want because <laughs> it will adhere, it's just paper. But anyway, I'm going around and just um, using my marker to um, hit those highlighted areas, which is permanent and it looks beautiful.
Now, to add a little something else extra, since this line is Grand Hotel, and as I mentioned, it's all about like these swatches of fabric and wallpaper what could be better than some fabric swatches so i just went uh, and looked at our fabrics and i cut out some little s snippets uh, with madison's help of um, different colors so like the brown got brown fabrics the teal got teal fabrics the blue got blue fabrics and of course our pink got some gorgeous pink fabrics they're just scraps guys i frayed some of the edges uh, so all i needed was little bits and using my hot glue gun since it was already on all that i've done is added those on there as a layering and focal point in the front what do you guys think i hope you guys have enjoyed it now i want to hear from you guys one thing do you like the brown one better the teal the pink the blue are you team pink? Are you team brown? Let me know what which one's your favorite. I'm going to show you some close-up photos here at the end of these and some additional information. So um, if you are new to the channel, of course, welcome and thank you so much. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Stay tuned because I've got not only some additional information for you guys about who we are and all kinds of upcoming fun stuff, but also I'm gonna have some information uh, or a video at the end so you can go ahead and check out some more inspiration. As I mentioned, there's going to be a probably a series coming up here shortly on wax seals. So I'll give you some great ideas on what to do with your wax seals or a way to take them up into the next, you know, a notch up, a next level. So stay tuned for that upcoming series. So here they are in their full glory which one is your favorite please let us know in the comments down below and you just might be the winner of a hidden uh, giveaway prize be it one of these tags or something else once again we hope that you will check out our online stores we have two online stores to serve you we have our online store spectrumartcreations.com and we also have a store on etsy they both have different products um thousands of products amazing from all around the world uh, please do check us out and of course as i mentioned join us on uh, saturdays for our live sales so that you can shop live make some friends we get to know you better you get to chat with us and of course join in on all the fun uh, that we have going on because it is a lot of fun kind of crazy but super fun um, and you can learn more about products with us as well as join in the giveaways. Of course, if you are not part of the Spectrum Art Creations Academy and you want some more exclusive online classes, workshops, lives, tutorials, then please do check out the on I'm sorry, the online academy, which is Saks Academy. For those of you who are members, please allow me to take 10 seconds and thank you so much because it is thanks to you that we are able to continue to bring free content to the channel as well. If you have not joined our Facebook group, please do check that out because we have a Facebook group full of inspiration and amazing friends where you're able to post all your makes, your shares, and questions. And of course, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel for all of these reasons and so much more. Here's that other video that I showed you, or that I promised you. Please go check it out and we will see you there. Thanks guys. Bye.